Breaking news! Alternatives to palm oil are on the way. C16 Biosciences are using cutting-edge technology to help save the rainforest and all its inhabitants. Could this be the solution to change the fate of the critically endangered orangutan? Find out next as I, Kid Conservationist, get inside look at C16's lab. Come on in. Hi, my name's Jack, the Kid Conservationist. I'm the youth ambassador for Orangutan Alliance. Today I'm at C16 Biosciences where I get to take a tour of their lab. I'm joined by two, two owners of C16 Biosciences. Could you please introduce yourselves? Hello, I'm David Heller, one of the co-founders of C16. And I'm Shara Tiku, the co-founder and CEO of C16. So could you tell me a bit more about yourselves? Absolutely, happy to. Um, I grew up in New Jersey. Um, much like yourself, I was very interested in animals and a little bit in conservation. Uh, when I was much younger, I used to go out to the little brook behind my house and try to find foxes and stuff like that. I was interested in biology from a young age. Um, I went to school in Boston at MIT to study biological engineering, um, which really helped me gain a little bit more experience um, in terms of how people are using really, really cool biotechnologies to, to solve different challenges. And, um, and yeah, I became really interested in, in trying to see if there was some interesting way to, um, to use advanced biologies to, to, to work on the environment, work on conservation. Uh, nutrients. Definitely nutrients, yeah. What, what kind of nutrients? What kind of sweet nutrients? Uh, poop. There you go. That's one of them, absolutely. Cells need sugar just like we do, right? And that's, a, that's what makes these really, really awesome is that they take the sugar in and they do some really interesting chemistry and biology inside themselves and they make, they turn that sugar into oils. Wow. It's, pretty, it's pretty amazing when you think about it. They take in sugar, basically similar sugars that we eat, right? And they convert into oils, which honestly is similar to what we do, right? Yeah. If we don't, if we don't exercise enough, we turn, we turn some of our sugar into oils also, right? Into lipids. Yeah. And so the cells are the same way. They actually store the sugars that they take in as oils. And that's really good for us because that's the oil that we need to hopefully help help some orangutans out one day. So, have you have you heard of the Impossible Burger before? Yes. So, David and Harry and I met just a few months after the Impossible Burger was launched for the very first time. Um, it was launched here in New York at a restaurant, and this was late 2016. And three of us were really excited about this because the technology that they use to make the Impossible Burger is basically a technology where you engineer biology and you use little microorganisms as new kinds of factories for making better versions of products. And in this case, for making a better burger that's better for you and better for the planet. And we started talking about palm oil because Harry and I had both recently seen firsthand the massive scale of destruction uh, caused by the palm oil industry. So I was sent to Singapore for work in 2013. And as you know, Jack, palm oil is mostly produced in Indonesia and Malaysia. And they frequently, so they burn the rainforest to clear land to make way for palm oil plantations. And they clear the existing trees to uh, regenerate the space for new plantations. And so they're very frequently burning the trees and the carbon-rich peat land, which ends up releasing one and a half billion tons of CO2 into the air every year. So the three of us started looking into it. We realized it was a huge industry that palm oil's in about 50% of products on supermarket shelves and the people were looking for an alternative and they couldn't find one. And so we set to work uh, working on it. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. And when you started your company, what was your big goal? We really, really cared about doing something about, about this industry um, that has, you know, for a long time, um, 
led to the destruction of really, really important ecosystems, um, has driven out indigenous people from their homes, um, has you know, displaced um, wildlife, as you know. And so we were really, really interested in figuring out a, a cleaner biological solution to this issue. And so I would say the, the big goal that we were thinking about is we really foresee a future where, where consumers don't have to sacrifice sustainability for the products that they love. Where a consumer can choose to purchase a, a chocolate bar or a shampoo and know that they are not negatively impacting the environment by the purchase that they are making. And we really wanted to focus on that issue specifically when it came to palm oil. It's called a centrifuge. And you just want to make sure there's basically the same amount of liquid in each of these because it has to be balanced. And the centrifuge, this rotor in here, mm -hmm. spins super, super fast, like a million times faster than that. And then what happens is exactly what I was explaining before, where the heavy things go to the bottom and the light things go to the top. So I'm just going to spin it for one minute. And this is 15,000. Do you know what RPM stands for? Uh, rotations per minute. Very good. Perfect. 15,000 rotations per minute. So that's like a lot of rotations. I don't even know how to describe it. <laughs> Happy New Year! <laughs> it is almost the New Year. Whoa. See what happened? That's interesting. That's cool. Pretty cool. You, see, you can still see the orange color, right? Yeah. Yeah, take it. So, these are the cells, right? That's right. And then this is the it's actual called, sugar. Exactly. It's called media. Media. Yeah, it's media. the liquid sugar that they're eating. The cells and media. Perfect. That's cool. Whoa. Ready to analyze it? Yeah. Perfect. So where are you in your process? Like in the lab I saw that you may still be tinkering with the recipe and seeing what recipe works best or are, is, the, is your palm oil already in products? That's a great question. I think, I think you used the right word, which is tinkering. There's a lot of, a lot of tinkering that happens in biology. We are, we're still in R&D, research and development phase, stage. There's basically three things that need to happen. So first, we have to get the recipe, right? Just like if you're making cookies or something, you have to make sure you've got the perfect recipe to make the exact cookie taste that you want. It's gotta be the right level of chewy and all of that. It's the same thing with palm oil. So first, we have to get the recipe right. Second, we have to scale it up. So maybe you make your first cookie and then you need to be able to make batches and batches and batches for your bakery. So right now we're making a couple of kilograms of oil at a time and we need to be able to scale that up so that we can make hundreds of kilograms and eventually metric tons and hundreds of metric tons so that we can supply all the customers that want a sustainable alternative to palm oil. And then the third thing is we have to find the customers that want to use this in their supply chain and that are ready to make the switch. So is it fun to work here? I would say so, for sure. I think it's the best job in the world. Mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, it's, it's been an absolute um, joy to be working and helping build this team. Um, this issue really, really means a lot to me and a lot to all of us. And I think that um, to be able to come in every day and really be able to do some really cool science that you just got a chance to see and, and to have it really have a purpose that, um, that, we can, that we can sort of imagine a, a better future using um, what we make. Uh, it's pretty awesome. And I, I love working with these people, so can't ask for more than that. Well, that pretty much wraps up our interview. Thank you, Shara. Thank you, David.